Hello and welcome back to the Arrow Academy channel, where we provide clear, practical insights into complex financial and sustainability reporting standards. In today's video, we'll walk through how lessees account for leases in accordance with IFRS 16, focusing on the journal entries required at initial recognition and subsequent measurement. Whether you're involved in the day-to-day -day financial accounting, preparing financial statements or reviewing lease disclosures, this session will help you apply the IFRS 16 standard accurately and with confidence. Let's begin with a quick overview. IFRS 16 introduced a significant change, a single lessee accounting model. This means that both operating and finance leases are now recognised on the balance sheet unless they qualify for a low value or short-term exemption. At the commencement of a lease, a lessee is required to compute and recognise both a lease liability and a right of use asset in the balance sheet. Let's walk through an example. Company A leases a car for five years, paying $100,000 annually upfront. The discount rate used is 7%. The present value of lease payments is $438,721. At the commencement of the lease, the journal entry to recognise the right of use asset and lease liability is as follows. Debit, right of use, asset, $438,721 and credit, lease, liability, $438,721. Once the lease has been recognised at commencement, the lease liability is not static. Subsequently, it's measured by adjusting for changes over time. Each year, two important financial activities take place. The lease payments reduce the liability, while interest on the remaining balance increases it. Let's look at how this plays out in the first year of a lease. The lessee makes a lease payment of $100,000, which directly reduces the outstanding liability. Meanwhile, interest is accreted on the lease liability using the discount rate applied at commencement. In this example, that's $23,710 for year one. These journal entries ensure that the financial statements reflect both the repayment of the lease obligation and the cost of financing the asset over time. As lease payments are made, the lease liability is gradually reduced. At the same time, interest is added based on the discount rate applied at commencement, increasing the liability. Together, these movements impact both cash flow and expense reporting throughout the lease term. This process repeats each year, reducing both the right of use asset and lease liability, ensuring IFRS 16 compliance and accurate financial reporting. After initial recognition, the right of use asset is depreciated over the lease term in line with IS 16. In our example, this results in a year one depreciation of $87,744. This depreciation is reported as an expense in the profit and loss statement, reflecting the cost of using the leased asset over time. To record this, the journal entry is debit depreciation expense $87,744, credit accumulated depreciation, right of use asset $87,744. In addition to regular depreciation, it's important to note that impairment testing may apply if there are indicators that the asset's value has declined significantly. Lease modifications are common when contractual terms change mid-contract, such as extensions, reductions or changes in payment terms. Under IFRS 16, when a modification occurs, the lease liability is recalculated and any adjustment is offset against the right of use asset. In this example, Company A extends its lease by three years at $120,000 per year after three years. As a result, the lease liability increases from $193,453 to $478,937. The increase of $285,484 is recorded by adjusting the right of use asset with this journal entry. Debit, right of use asset $285,484 and credit, Lease liability, $285,484. 
This ensures that the financials remain accurate and reflect the updated lease commitment throughout the lease term. IFRS 16 allows recognition exemptions for low-value and short-term leases. Specifically, recognition exemptions apply when leases are either short-term, under 12 months, or low in value. These leases don't appear on the balance sheet. Instead, the cost is expensed as incurred over the lease term. A typical journal entry would be debit, lease expense, and credit, bank or accounts payable. That concludes our walkthrough of lease journal entries under IFRS 16. By now, you should have a clear understanding of how to record both initial and ongoing lease entries. With this foundation, you're ready to apply these principles confidently to real lease scenarios in your organisation. To deepen your knowledge, be sure to check out our full IFRS 16 training, where we explore more complex cases and practical guidance. And if you're looking to save time and ensure compliance, consider automating your lease accounting with RO Lease IFRS 16. Want to deepen your understanding of IFRS 16? Visit our website to register for full training or book a demo to see how RO Lease IFRS 16 can support your compliance and automation needs. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on ESG, IFRS and financial reporting. Follow Arrow Academy on social media to stay updated on new events and learning opportunities. Thanks for watching.